first speaker of the afternoon session will be Marco Gramenia. We will talk about measuring the non commuting observables of the single photo device in place with weak value evaluation. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, let me thank the organizer for their kind invitation for the beautiful organization of this uh, fantastic workshop and school. Uh, today, I will uh, introduce you uh, some, uh, to some experiments we uh, recently performed in our quantum optics uh, labs in uh, Torino, the north of Italy. The name of the institute is uh, Istituto Nazionale di Ricerca Metrologica, so we are a metrological uh, center of research. And uh, um, briefly, uh, today, uh, adding another experiment to the, to the one uh, reported in the title of the talk, um, I will introduce you also to another uh, quantum measurement paradigm whose uh, name is protective measurement. Uh, with which we uh, recently obtained very nice results, published uh, last month. So uh, each experiment I will uh, uh, talk to you about today uh, is uh, uh, related to um, particular uh, non-orthodox uh, uh, quantum measurement uh, uh, paradigm, and uh, uh, the name is uh, weak measurement. So briefly, uh, to introduce you uh, in a short way, uh, this kind of uh, paradigm, uh, I inserted here the seminal paper uh, with which uh, Arno, Albert, and Weidmann um, reported on this kind of uh, uh, type of uh, quantum measurement. Briefly, uh, the weak measurement, uh, thanks to the weak measurement, we can uh, provide some information uh, softly disturbing the, the evolution of the system, so preventing the collapse of the wave function. And thanks to the weakness of the interaction, uh, we obtain a, a very particular results that sometimes uh, are uh, uh, very weird. Uh, in particular, uh, the authors in the theoretical paper this reference is here, uh, consider the case in which uh, uh, weak measurement take place uh, between uh, uh, two strong conventional uh, measurements that uh, they call the pre- and post-selected states. So uh, we have uh, an initial state and final state. And so if we want to evaluate uh, uh, an observable of, uh, of the system, represented in this case by uh, the Hermitian operator, a, uh, the definition of the weak measurement uh, gives, and of uh, the weak values, give uh, this, uh, this, uh, this formula. Sorry. Typically, typically in a weak measurement uh, approach, uh, we exploit the common von Neumann coupling between uh, an observable, uh, in this case A, and uh, a pointer uh, uh, observable, let's say the momentum of the, the needle of the measurement apparatus. And uh, the, the unitarity, uh, unitary operation is, uh, is this, where uh, G represents a, a real coupling system, and A and P are the two observable. Um, in this framework, the correlation are generated between the shift of the, of the pointer and the quantum system through uh, this von Neumann approach. After that, we uh, post-select, so in a strong way, uh, uh, on the final state. And the overall uh, state at the output of uh, this procedure uh, takes this, uh, this form. Let's take in mind that uh, uh, here we are considering the momentum. and. Uh, uh, you know that X uh, is a canonical uh, conjugated uh, operator to, to, to the momentum, so the, the position of the, the needle uh, of the measurement apparatus. And in this kind uh, of uh, paradigm, if we measure uh, this value, so the, the shift in the pointer of position, uh, we see that performing the calculation, uh, X is related to the real part of the weak value. I say uh, the real part because uh, um, weak values are a particular uh, objects. In fact, they are 
um, complex, complex number. And uh, moreover, uh, they are unbounded. So in contrast to uh, the, the standard quantum mechanical uh, expectation values, weak values are not constrained to, to lie within the, um, uh, the extreme of the uh, eigenvalue spectrum. And uh, despite the fact that this can be counterintuitive, uh, the prediction of this formal is follows directly from uh, the calculation of the quantum mechanics. Uh, it is, uh, I have not to say that uh, this is uh, something like uh, weird uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, here you see a lot of uh, paper in which uh, discuss the interpretational issues of this uh, approach. And uh, if someone is interested in, I suggest in particular this uh, review that gives a very good uh, overview of the, of the problem. Uh, anyway, for uh, by an experimental point of view, uh, they are anyway interesting because uh, uh, we we can uh, extract some uh, very nice uh, information following this uh, this approach. In particular, um, the, the bibliography is very rich about this, uh, and uh, the field of applications are spans from uh, metrology, foundational quantum mechanics and also quantum optics. The experiment that I will uh, introduce you now uh, deal with uh, this kind of uh, uh, measurement, so quantum optic, pure quantum optics uh, uh, experiment, exploiting the, the birefringent effects of, uh, on photon polarization. So to uh, briefly uh, recap the situation, in a strong measurement, uh, we have, using a birefringent crystal, a photon uh, with a certain unknown polarization that enters into uh, this, uh, this crystal, birefringent crystal. And uh, depending on uh, the polarization of, uh, of the entering and coming uh, uh, particle, we have uh, this, uh, this situation uh, at the output. So uh, this is a strong measurement. In fact, uh, uh, we have uh, a collapse of the wave function. In the other uh, approach, in the weak measurement approach, uh, the information given by the weak measurement is uh, not fully described, but the initial state uh, does not collapse. And so uh, it is ready for a second measurement that could be strong or, again, weak. So you see that uh, there is an overlap between uh, the two beams at variance with this, uh, this case. This case is something like an external Gerlach uh, apparatus in an optical version. So if we, after this uh, first week measurement, we implement a sharp measurement, again, we have uh, the wave function collapse. And so it is not possible to uh, simultaneously evaluate to uh, non-commuting observables. But uh, in this other paper by Michison, Yosa, and Popescu, uh, they say that uh, with this uh, weak uh, measurement approach, is it, po it is possible to uh, release this uh, strict uh, bound in order to uh, perform uh, a measure on different variables in sequence. And so uh, this opened the door to uh, other measurement that uh, can be joint weak measurement, uh, and this is the proposal, and also uh, sequential weak measurement. So um, today I will uh, talk about the sequential. And in particular, we have to uh, experimentally uh, evaluate this, uh, this formula. So uh, our setup uh, was something like this. So we have a, an initial state, psi e, uh, and that enters into the experiment in this uh, direction. So here, we have uh, the first weak interaction. And uh, here we have a, a projection on a vertical state of polarization. After that, the photons enter into the second block of measurement, again weak measurement, that now 
uh, is uh, uh, operated uh, in order to uh, have a projection on, uh, on this direction, psi, always, uh, again, uh, linearly polarized, but uh, is, uh, in a, um, has an orientation that uh, uh, makes these two operators not, uh, not orthogonal, so in principle uh, not uh, evaluable. The aim of, uh, of this uh, kind of uh, setup is to measure x, that is related to uh, the weak values of uh, psi p, um, y, uh, that is related to pi uh, v, and uh, the, um, the covariance of uh, x and y. Because uh, due to the fact that we can measure these uh, by evaluating the um, the position of the, the first uh, measurement apparatus and uh, the same with uh, the second measurement apparatus. Uh, and obviously, we are able to measure this, uh, this part, this term. Uh, inverting this relation, we are able to uh, obtain the sequential weak values uh, of this, uh, this uh, term. The experimental setup is something like this. We have a, a mod-locked laser. Uh, femtosecond uh, operating femtosecond regime, uh, a second harmonic generator that gives a, a pump uh, of a central wavelength around uh, um, uh, of, uh, about uh, 400 nanometers. And this pump enters into an nonlinear crystal in order to uh, give uh, a parametric down conversion uh, emission. So we have at the output two uh, correlated beams, uh, two entangled photons. And uh, uh, on one branch, we take the, the trigger. So in this uh, part of the setup, we have the, the trigger. So the, the single photon enters into the fiber, goes to a single photon detector that opens uh, a gate uh, on this uh, particular uh, sped array camera that I will describe you in a while. And this uh, signal heralds the arrival of the correlated photons on the other branch. So uh, here we have a coupling of the, the single photon uh, into a single mode fiber. And the light uh, is, uh, is going into this uh, part of the experiment. Here we have uh, the preselection of the state. Um, linear polarization. Here, the first weak measurement operated by, uh, by refringent crystal. The second crystal is just uh, mm, inserted because uh, here we have the polarization that splits uh, vertical from horizontal. But this uh, um, spatial walk-off um, uh, also, uh, has also a temporal walk-off. So um, due to the fact that the, the group velocity is uh, different with respect for the propagation of the two uh, polarization inside the crystal, we have that, in principle, the two channels uh, at the output are, uh, have some uh, time delay. So these compensate for uh, this delay. After that, we, the photon, the single photon, enters into the second block of measurement. These and these are two halfway plates that are inserted in order to uh, orient the polarization of the photon in a non-orthogonal uh, direction with respect to the first one. And after that, we have a post-selection. Uh, you see that uh, the G2 uh, value of the, the source is, uh, gives a result that uh, uh, very high. Uh, so this is pure uh, single photon source. And the Raldin detection is about uh, 100 kilohertz. And the integration window of the camera is uh, about uh, 6 nanoseconds. This is the device. Uh, so in a nutshell, this is uh, a particular CCD camera in which uh, each pixel uh, is a real uh, single photon uh, detector. So uh, it's a prototype. Uh, realized by Politecnico di Milano. It's not on the market now. And uh, uh, this is a typical uh, measurement uh, data acquisition. Uh, and you see that uh, each 
each uh, uh, block is a, a single, uh, uh, single detection. And uh, you see that uh, the reconstruction uh, of uh, the, the beam with respect to the theoretical uh, simulation uh, have a very high fidelity. Briefly, uh, to uh, move to the experimental results, uh, we see that uh, we obtained very uh, nice uh, uh, data points. Uh, this uh, region, the blue region, uh, represents the, the bound region of the eigenvalues. And you see that uh, sometimes, okay, the, the red blocks refer to these uh, values, experimental values. Um, and you see that uh, mm, sometimes you can have some experimental data that uh, is outside uh, the, the bounded area, the bounded zone uh, represented by the spectrum of the eigenvalues. And uh, sometimes you see that, uh, uh, for example, um, in, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, some data that are uh, close, very close to zero, and the other are negative, um, despite the fact that, in particular, uh, we have a negative value for uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, object, and uh, despite the fact that one is zero and the other is, uh, is positive. Uh, we check it also for consistency of, uh, of these uh, weak values, and we found uh, that, with respect to the theory, we obtained, um, considering also the uncertainty, a very, very good result. So um, weak values and weak measurement represent for us a, a, an intriguing uh, paradigm uh, to be uh, investigated. Uh, so uh, due to reason of time, I switch to uh, the second part of, uh, of the talk, in which I, I will introduce you uh, Another intriguing uh, uh, paradigm whose uh, name is uh, protective measurement. Very weird for some aspects. Um, so in order to introduce this, uh, this paradigm, uh, I say before that, uh, as you know, in standard quantum mechanics, uh, when uh, we have uh, an initial state, psi, a wave function, and we want to uh, evaluate an observable A, um, we can uh, associate a, a definite number uh, to this object. And the meaning of, uh, of this number is uh, purely statistic, statistical. Uh, because to find the expectation value of the observable, we have to measure uh, an ensemble of uh, identically prepared uh, particles a lot of time. In another seminal paper, always uh, by Aronov and Weidmann, they proposed a particular uh, paradigm that uh, they called the uh, protective measurement that uh, uh, is very weird. So in some sense, uh, they proposed that uh, it is possible to find the expectation value of uh, an observable by measuring only one single uh, particle. Obviously, uh, with respect to the standard quantum mechanic, this is uh, uh, very uh, weird. And uh, obviously, uh, a controversial issue uh, was raised up. Uh, so again, uh, we have a lot of paper that debate about this argument, whose main point was uh, with this uh, procedure, we observe the state or only the protection mechanism. OK, up to now, there is no answer. Uh, the fight is uh, still open. Anyway, uh, on the experimental point of view, uh, we decided to investigate deeper this, uh, this kind of approach. And uh, due to the fact that uh, an experimental uh, implementation of this paradigm was missing, we decided to, um, to implement uh, a particular uh, a variant of uh, this uh, protection paradigm uh, that uh, is active and is based on the Zeno effect. 
and uh, in particular, uh, as uh, it will be clear uh, later, in our Xeno protection method, we, at uh, the end, uh, project on a strongly on a particular uh, state. So um, I recap uh, the, the projective measurement. We have an initial state entering uh, into a birefringent crystal. And uh, here uh, we uh, have a strong measurement. This is the operator, the evolution operator that uh, uh, described the, the interaction. And the, the global state composed by the state and the measurement apparatus uh, evolves in this way. You see that here we have something like a, an entanglement between the system and the measurement apparatus. Here, the, the observable that we want to evaluate uh, is uh, this one, so uh, something that discriminates from uh, horizontal to vertical polarization. And this is the standard scheme uh, of sterner gerlach So uh, we have that some photons will uh, fall down here, other here. In the protective uh, uh, scheme, Let's concentrate our attention uh, to a single step at the beginning. We have a different, uh, different setup. Here, we perform a weak measurement. So with respect to the strong, the, the crystal will be uh, thinner. And um, when the photon goes out from this uh, thin crystal, we insert a Xeno protection, operated in this case by a thin uh, polarizer, oriented uh, on side direction. And we repeat uh, this scheme, this fundamental scheme, n times. In principle, the theory say that uh, the, these steps uh, has to tend toward the uh, infinite. Obviously, in an uh, experimental implementation, uh, we will uh, uh, have a finite uh, number of steps. Anyway, in this case, you see that the evolution of the global state returns out this uh, kind of um, equation in which there is no more entanglement. And in principle, also with the, considering the measurement on one particle, we can gain information about the expectation value of the observable. Obviously, uh, when we consider the number of single particles, we can increase the precision uh, of, uh, of the measurement. But anyway, in principle, it is possible to extract some information only considering one single particle. The experimental setup is uh, is uh, almost the same uh, for what concerns the, the source, uh, the pump of uh, and, and the single photon source, let's say. But now, the, the heralded single photon is uh, prepared in this block. And after that, we have, uh, again, um, a weak measurement uh, crystal, a second crystal, again, uh, to compensate for temporal walk-off. And now, here we have a polarizing plate that operates the uh, protection. The spatial mode uh, of the, that comes out from uh, the single mode fiber is uh, close to Gaussian, uh, with a distribution, uh, spatial distribution uh, uh, of about uh, four pixels. And this block introduces a separation between the two uh, polarizations of about uh, one and a half pixel. So this is less than the, the beam width. If we repeat uh, this fundamental block k times at limit to infinite, but for uh, uh, space uh, uh, reason and also money reason, we reduced from infinite to seven steps. But anyway, it was uh, sufficient for uh, uh, observe what we, we want to, to observe, we uh, obtained uh, this result. So on the camera, 
this is the display of the camera. Each uh, point uh, represents one single photon. And this is the distribution when the protection is not active. So there is not the, uh, the polarizing uh, plate. When we insert this uh, protection, this Zeno protection, we see that the distribution focus uh, very close to the expected theoretical value. Here, we perform this experiment um, with a, an initial state uh, of uh, this shape. The theoretical value we uh, had to uh, measure was uh, this. And uh, with our implementation, we obtained experimentally this value that uh, considering also the uncertainty, it's uh, uh, very uh, close to the theoretical value. Taking only one frame of this camera, you see that, uh, this is a single photon, you see that with this uh, uh, procedure, it is possible to extract the expectation value of uh, the polarization of the photon by means of a uh, a measurement performed on single protected photon. These uh, are uh, uh, the results uh, with a huge number of photons with different uh, initial states. And uh, just in order to conclude, uh, I just mentioned that this uh, kind of uh, protection scheme is something uh, like this uh, quantum information protocol, where Bob <laughs> wants to measure the expectation value of an observable on a quantum state that is unknown to him, in presence of a protection mechanism designed for such state. So the state, together with the, the protection mechanism, is uh, uh, prepared by Alice, who needs to know, obviously, the, the state to set up the protection. And thus, Bob, uh, measure the photon in conjunction with the protection apparatus. So, uh, this is, uh, uh, just to recap, uh, another intriguing result that uh, is going to be published. And uh, just uh, to summarize uh, uh, what I reported, in the first part, uh, I introduced you some uh, particular uh, measurement related to uh, weak values, in particular the possibility to uh, operate an experimental implementation uh, of sequential uh, weak values. And in the second part, uh, we implemented a, something like a more complex uh, uh, protocol in order to uh, test what in literature is called uh, protective measurement. Obviously, uh, these uh, these uh, experiments are, uh, again, ongoing because uh, we, we want to uh, go deep in, into this, uh, this kind of research. But for the moment, uh, uh, here you find the reference in the case you are interested in this kind of uh, uh, weak measurement. So uh, thank you for your attention. This is uh, the, the group uh, in which uh, I work and um, the theoretical uh, group is composed by Elio Cohen from Bristol and Lev Meinmann from uh, Tel Aviv University. And uh, the special, uh, special uh, single photon avalanche dyed uh, array camera is, uh, um, open, has been uh, invented and produced by Polytechnico Milan in collaboration with uh, microphoton devices. So uh, thank you for your attention, and I thank again the organizer for uh, the kind invitation. Thank you.